The following program was produced by the United States Courts. Equal justice under law. Those words are engraved on the U.S. Supreme Court building. And for senior appellate judge Damon Keith, those words are a declaration that defined his life and helped shape our nation's history. In this moment in history, we reflect on a jurist who used the law as a means to achieve equality for all Americans. And in Pontiac, Michigan, where 10 school buses were dynamited last week, the tensions are growing by the hour. On February 20th, 1969, after just one year on the bench, Judge Damon J. Keith took on a national controversy, Davis versus the Pontiac School District. African-American students claim the district intentionally arranged school boundaries to perpetuate a pattern of segregation. Okay, tomorrow morning, when the buses roll from La Farron Elementary, my daughter will not be on that bus. She will not be in a parochial school. It was a desegregation battle, and Keith found himself in the center of it. When they bombed those buses out there in Pontiac, it just hurt my heart, right? How could hatred be that difficult when you want to just send your children to school? Despite personal threats and community protests, Keith ordered the Pontiac School District to integrate its schools at all levels students, faculty, and administrators, and to do so before the beginning of the next school year. But this decision was only the first of many civil rights disputes that Keith left his mark on during his more than a half century as a judge. I went to Howard University, and that's where I met Thurgood, and Charlie Houston, and George E.C. Hayes, and Jim Neighbors, these great legal scholars, and they were working on a legal theory to end discrimination legally. Just a tremendous experience. And that's where uh, I became very close to Thurgood Marshall. After graduating from law school, Keith returned to his home in Detroit, Michigan. But opportunities for African American attorneys to practice law in the mid 1950s were limited. The law was absolutely segregated. There were no black judges, no black officials, and some of the lawyers worked at night at the post office uh, and then would come and sit in the jury box like I did, hoping that the white judges would give us assignments. Keith, along with several other young black lawyers, started their own practice, and for the next 15 years, Keith sought justice for his black clients, started a family, and his law firm flourished. Then in 1967, there was a vacancy on the bench, and Michigan Senator Philip Hart suggested Keith to President Lyndon B. Johnson, who appointed Keith to the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Michigan. Deterioration, ugliness amid affluence. What can we do? Any number of things. In 1971, Judge Keith presided over a three-week trial involving the city of Hamtramck, a suburb of Detroit, and a group of black families who claimed they were illegally forced to abandon their homes for an urban renewal project. Keith agreed, ordering the city to build more than 200 homes for the families. The building project lingered for over 40 years. It's considered the longest-running housing bias case in U.S. history. What he did is he ordered a remedy and then to meet people in the community and they say, my grandmother passed during the pendency of this case, but justice was not denied because my father was able to get in a home that was rightfully his. And it's directly at benefit of Judge Keith. Soon after the Hamtramck decision, Keith presided over a case in which a local utility company, Detroit Edison, was accused of racial discrimination in its hiring practices. The company placed black dots on applications to easily identify African Americans so they would be excluded from promotions and managerial roles. Judge Keith ruled that Detroit Edison had practiced systematic racial discrimination imposed several sanctions, and maintained oversight over the case by receiving reports every other month for six years. But it was a 1972 case involving the Nixon administration that thrust Keith into the national spotlight 
when he ruled that the government needed to obtain a warrant to authorize a wiretap, even when national security was at stake. I had made my decision that the government had to let the defendants see the tapes that they're alleging are a threat to our national security. And I told Nixon and Mitchell, you've got to let the defendants' lawyers see these tapes. And they said, we don't have to. So they appealed to the Court of Appeals in Cincinnati. I mean, the Court of Appeals had ruled in my favor two to one for some unreason. Nixon and Mitchell appealed it to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court affirmed me 8-0. To this day, the landmark decision is widely known as the Keith case. Eight years later, while serving as the chief judge for the district court, Keith was nominated to become an appellate judge, but he was reluctant to leave the district court until he received a call from an old friend, Thurgood Marshall, who had become the first African-American Supreme Court justice. He says, Damon, this is Thurgood. Is what this here about you, if they nominate you to the Sixth Circuit, you wouldn't accept you spring stay there as a district judge. If they offer it to you, you take it, you hung up. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter appointed Judge Damon Keith to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. But his new position did not isolate Keith from racial injustice. Chief Justice Rehnquist had appointed me the national chairman of the bicentennial of the U.S. Constitution. We had a national meeting and a white man drove up and said, boy, park my car. He said, there's not a day in my life that I'm not reminded of the fact that I'm black. That still stays with me as a story that he retold often, frankly, because he wanted us to remember that as much privilege as we experienced because we were lawyers, because we would be in positions of power, and that any day we could also be susceptible to bigotry and mistreatment, and it was how you responded to that that made the difference. Over the years, Judge Keith has received numerous awards, countless recognitions, books, articles, a documentary, and schools are named in his honor. At one level, uh, you're looking at one of the greatest jurists this country has ever produced. Uh, and it's not a Michigan story or Detroit story, it's a, it's a national story. Uh, and I think he'll go down as a, as a pioneering judge and, and one of the greatest legal minds and, and, and judicial personages that, that have been in this country. There are a host of African-American judges, and I think it's a significant contribution to the judiciary which has come out of it. Certainly, there are other judges and justices with a, a civil rights framework, and that's wonderful and important, but to have a significant cadre of African-Americans who are actually a part of the bench contributing to the jurisprudence, that is significant. And I think it laid a really important foundation in terms of moving the country forward. There's uh, work to be done. And uh, thanks to some of the courageous presidents who have appointed intentionally black judges and women judges, we're making progress. For more than a half century, Damon Keith has applied the law to advance the cause of civil rights. In doing so, he has helped shape and strengthen the nation's commitment to treating all with equal justice under law. For the U.S. Courts in Washington, I'm Bridget Lyles. Thanks for watching.